Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we're going to talk about Lehman Ross, the Primarch of the Space Wolves. And we're talking about Lehman Ross because he's a very good candidate for a loyalist Primarch that could return to the tabletop and to 40k without it being too much of a stretch. Now, when you look at some of the other Primarchs, I mean, for a start, you've got the dead ones. That, that's all going to require some serious uh, black magic or messing about with the Inari, which, let's face it, couldn't be great. Ferris Manus has been cloned a few times, so you never know, one could have magically escaped Fulgrim and has only just now found his way back to the Imperium. You can have that one for free, uh, Games Workshop. You can have that. I won't even charge you for that, because uh, it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, like, the Khan is most likely captured by Dark... Dark, well, by Dark Eldar. I nearly corrected myself from saying Dark Eldar to Eldar, but it was Dark Eldar. It wasn't captured by just Eldar. Um, Vulcan has left his hilarious breadcrumb trail of artifacts around for his sons to find, although that could all just be nonsense. You, you never know. Lehman Russ quite literally held a lovely big feast. I know there are more living Primarchs, but we're not going to talk about all of them now. Um, <laughs> just the ones that are being most awkward about it. Lehman Russ you know, called a big feast, got his, all his all his lads around him, he was like, Wolf Lords, Space Wolves, all a lot of you, I'm I, I'm going to piss off now, I'm going to the warp, um, I'll be back at some point in the future, uh, I'll be back for the wolf time, and I'll see you later, and then he left. Now, this is the one occasion where I will let Games Workshop off with their terrible naming conventions for Space Wolf stuff. I mean, you don't need you don't need a wolf lord riding a thunder wolf, surrounded by a pack of Fenrisian wolves, while he's wearing the wolf cloak and the wolf amulet, and he's got a pair of wolf claws. You don't need that. That's silly. However, much though wolf time is also silly because it doesn't mean anything, it's at least vague enough that you could say that at any particular point. Oh, this is the wolf time. So in that respect, I'll let them off <laughs> because in this, case, you know, in this particular situation, Lehman Russ could come back at any point and go, "I said I'd be back for the wolf time," and the response would be, "Oh, no, oh, now's the wolf time." I mean, it's not on a calendar. That's the thing with the wolf time. It's not like January, February, March, wolf time, April, May. It's not like some sort of massive. It's 2017, 2018, 2019. 20 wolf time, uh, 2020, that's not how it works. It just seems to be whenever he fancies coming back. A lot of people thought that actually perhaps Magnus ripping his own planet out of the warp, sticking it in real space, and then royally mangling Fenris would have been the wolf time. But no, that wasn't enough. Uh, Lehman Rust is not coming back for that petty bullshit. Oh no, when he comes back, it'll be for the wolf time, baby. Because we just don't know when that is. But it does mean that conceivably... Any sort of disaster which could see the Imperium fall could be seen as the wolf time. Any sort of crazy incident where, I don't know, just as an example, a bunch of uh, super space marines who have been genetically engineered to be resistant to chaos somehow fell to chaos and we had almost a second incarnation of the Horus Heresy but with vast tides of primary space marines turning against their former Imperium masters, that could be classed as the wolf time. Um, <laughs> if that actually happens. <laughs> if that happens, I mean, I've called it, and I just want to say I've called it. It probably won't, but if it does, I was, I was there, all right? I was there. I said it. You heard it here first. It's most likely not going to happen. That is most likely just a random conjecture-filled joke. But god damn would it be funny if that turned out to be true. So, Lehman Russ, he comes back. It's time for the wolf time. Oh, I can't breathe today. I've got some sort of chest infection. It's really killing me. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. I woke up with it. Anyway, Lehman Russ, he recovers from his wolf chest infection. He leaves the warp, and he, uh, he comes back into real space. Now, this is where Games Workshop could do something really interesting, because if Lehman Russ comes back, when Lehman Russ comes back, we'll say for the sake of the video, when, although we obviously don't know if he will, but he, he will, uh... He comes back. There's two ways that Games Workshop could go about this. Well, technically three, but one of them is incredibly outlandish and involves Lehman Russ somehow having fallen to chaos, which I'm not having that. If that happens, I'll gen be genuinely annoyed because no, don't do that. There's two ways it could go. Either Lehman Russ comes out of the warp and he's like, lads, I am back. The wolf king lord of wolves of the wolf planet has returned with his two pet wolves and look at all these 13th company space wolves I brought with me. And look how many wolfen there are among them, because they are true wolves. If he comes back, and that's it, he's just as he was, 
just your standard your standard Lehman Ross <laughs> Primark, then I think Games Workshop will have missed a trick because I'm of the opinion that Lehman Ross, should he come back, they should do the second option, which is royally mess him up. Really go to town on the dude. So, the Space Wolves have something called the Canis Helix, which is... I've also heard people pronounce that as Canis Helix, which is canine, but I've always thought it was Canis Helix. Either way, whatever you want to pronounce it, whichever way I pronounce it, it's probably wrong, so knock yourself out. Um, they have something called the Canis Helix, which is... It's something that is put in before the gene seed, and they drink it, which is nice. They have a nice little drink of some some dodgy uh, DNA cocktail, and they they kind of go a bit bestial. So the Canis Helix increases their eyesight, so they, their eyesight is way better. Um, it increases their sense of smell, so their sense of smell is incredibly acute. I think it improves hearing as well. It gives them like pointed cl claws, fangs. It gives them pointed mouth claws. Like massive canine teeth, which uh, apparently can dent plasteel, which is hilarious. They get like leathery skin and lots of hair. They, it's it's like your classic werewolf thing, um, and and that's that's good. That's good. It's not bad. It's a good thing to have. You know, it senses that are even more acute than a normal space marines. Nothing to uh, to sniff at. Just, just so I did there. Just so I did there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it is a double-edged sword because it does essentially mean that they can, if they're not careful, succumb to the curse of the Wolfen, where they... If you imagine... You know those uh, those terrible horror films where there's a werewolf involved, and you get to see the, the werewolf as it's transforming from a human into a werewolf? Uh, that. Basically that, but with a bit of power armor left on and whatever weapons they were carrying. It's not a good look. Um, it's not what they're, they're, they're specifically after. In fact... They don't want Space Wolves to be turning into Wolfen all over the gaff because that's not really helpful. And for some reason, the Imperium seems to have a fairly dim view on chapters harboring blatant mutants, which is what the Wolfen are. But this opens up a really cool thing that they could do with Lehman Ross. And it would be crap if they didn't do it, in my opinion. You may disagree. As always, let me know in the comments. When you've finished watching it, this is the end of the video. Lehman Ross should absolutely be wolfenized. He should totally have lost some self-control. He should absolutely be like... Uh, I, w I would even suggest that it, because he's in the warp for so long, because he's been there for such a huge amount of time, even for warp time... I mean, I know it's it's time of passage of time is different in the warp than it is in real space. I would hope that Lehman Russ has had some considerable warp time. Um, I mean, he'll have been gone for, what, like 10,000 years or something um, in 40k. I would hope that there's at least a couple of hundred have passed in the warp, uh, because then there's real opportunity to do something different and unique with the Primarchs. As it is in the 40k universe, for the Imperium anyway, the Primarchs are very much revered. You know, they're, they're the sons of the Emperor. They lay down, they lay down their lives against the Great Horus to, to protect the Imperium. They are forgotten heroes. To have one come back in, like, uh, I'd, I'd suggest, this is just me, this is what I'd like to see, a properly bestial Primarch. Not like, kind of, oh, he, his teeth are longer than the other Primarchs. I'm talking proper, kind of, canine, wolf-like features. I'm talking, like, the back legs of the, of the new Wolfen. But, you know, beefier and not making it look like they're doing ninja or ballet moves. Um, I'd really like to see kind of a Primarch come back who is not just a Primarch. I mean, yeah, Gilliman is a ridiculous, uh, like, supercomputer of a Primarch. His, his, his grip on logistics is absolutely insane. It's like beyond cogitators. That's really cool. I mean, the lion has got his whole secrecy thing, you know, he's... The way the Dark Angels are set up and the way he behaved during the heresy and the way he has all these plans within plans and... That's really cool as well. But they're both still to the... To, you know, to your average Marine, to your average Guardsman, to your average Imperial Citizen who are lucky enough to see or hear of the Primarchs, they're still just... Righteous demigods. They are, you know, the loyal sons of the Emperor. Return to us. Oh, thank God for the Emperor. All of that. Thank God for the Emperor. You know what I mean? Praise the Emperor. All of that shit. 
if Lehman Russ came back and he was in a severely, severely kind of wolfish state, you know, his time in the warp had properly caused him to mutate, that he's not just a a superhuman warrior that people think he'll be, but he has this darker side, and there's got to be some kind of reconciliation between what people see as, you know, as a Primarch, and what a Primarch could actually be when they return from the warp. If Lehman Russ did come back, having succumbed to the curse of the Wolfen, it would just open it all up. It would make it a really interesting, not just a battle story, but a proper character story of a Primarch coming back to an Imperium to, you know, rejoicing and people being happy and then having to find their place. In a similar way to Gilliman, like Gilliman feels out of place in 40k as a, like, as a, as a person, as a not quite human anymore. He, he doesn't feel like he belongs because all of his brothers are gone. He has no equals around him. It would also introduce something interesting for that as well. Can you imagine the hope of hearing that your brother, the one person in this galaxy that you can relate to on an, on an intellectual level, on a physical strength level, on the level of being an essential demigod, you hear that he's come back, you hear troubling reports, and then finally meeting face to face, and he's succumbed to the curse of the wolfin, it would just open it up and make it so much more interesting. It would make the Imperium more interesting in how it deals with him. It would make him more interesting as a character. It would introduce new conflicts, different ways of looking at what the Primarchs are and what they do. If he just came back, it would just be another Primarch coming back. If he came back messed up, that would create an entirely new kind of texture to 40k law. It would introduce an entirely new way of looking at the Imperium and the way the Imperium functions when it comes to what they do when Primarchs come back. I really want to see that. I really want Lehman Russ to come back and I really want them to be brave and actually try and do something with the character. Make him not just how he always was. Actually physically change him. I mean, he'd be closer to a demon Primarch than any of the other Loyalist Primarchs. You know, just by dint of appearance, he would be so outlandish and so alien and so, well, heavily mutated. Like, how would the Inquisition deal with that? This is a son of the Emperor. He's loyal. He's clearly loyal. He's fighting on our side, but what the hell is going on with him? You know, it would make it so much more interesting. And that's what I want to see. So the question is, do you agree? Do you think that would be awesome? Do you think that would be terrible? Do you think Games Workshop could pull it off? Or would you be happy for him to just return as normal on the basis that they can't screw that over, like they can't screw that up at all? I'd be interested in what you think, because this is one of those things where, as a whole, when it comes to the Prime Arts coming back, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like the look of him. Yeah, that's okay. It's one of those things where, now that it's happening, I'm okay with it, but I'm not expecting a huge amount from it. Lehman Russ, I think just the sheer nature of the character and the sheer nature of his flaws and the way that he could be utilised to tell a much more interesting story, I I care a lot more about his return than I think any of the others. It'd be interesting to hear whether you, you know, think the same way, so let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Hit the like button, that's what the kid says, isn't it? Smash that, smash it, annihilate it. Put your mouse in front of you on the on the uh, on your desk. Put the cursor over the the thumbs up, and then just smack your face into it. Do that. No, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. There's other stuff to watch as well. There's a couple of videos. There's a Patreon link. There's a subscription link. You could subscribe as well if you want to. If you want more of this shit, then go for it. Uh, in the meantime, as I say, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Toodaloo.